cooks is probably the most important role on the property at times. You've got to have that good tucker to keep your staff up and running and keep, keep them happy. In April, two chefs traded retirement for an outback adventure their friends called crazy. Brisbane couple Anita and Jens Steffen drove nearly 2,000 kilometres north to take up the cook's job on a cattle station in Queensland's Gulf Country. There were lots of, of course, wallabies and we saw our first brolga marching along the road that way and the cattle. It's a good introduction to outback life. At just under half a million hectares, Abingdon Downs is one of the larger developed stations in the Gulf, running 16,000 Brahmins. The Stefan's job was to feed station owners Campbell Keogh and Anita Ganza, 10 staff, visiting contractors, the workers' children and governesses. And they had to get it right. The cooks is probably the most important role on the property at times. You've got to have that good tucker to keep your staff up and running and keep, keep them happy. Anita Ganza admits she took a punt on the 74-year-olds who weren't typical station cooks in terms of age or experience. Have you had some duds? Yes. That was quick, wasn't it? It's hit and miss. Um, I do find it quite difficult to get good station cooks and, and ones that actually um, enjoy what they're doing and have, you know, a clean, hygienic and all that sort of stuff. Anita and Jens ran their own restaurants, catering companies and a butchery in Scotland, Germany and the US before moving to Australia a decade ago. To these suburban new Australians, being in the far north of Queensland was like being in another country. Different climate, customs and taste buds. We really wanted to go to a remote area and a rural area and we 50 years ago in Scotland, we lived in a very rural area, and uh, so we thought we'd try it the other side of the world. The hours are long here, four in the morning till eight at night, five days a week. They cook breakfast, morning and afternoon smoko, lunch and dinner. As well, they prepare the tucker for the ringers, who work away for weeks at a time at the station's two mustering camps. The Stefan's brief, nourishing, wholesome food and lots of it. They really want a steak and onion gravy once a week. And they love shepherd's pie and then roasts, of course. Those are the most popular of, of them all. The biggest surprise for staff was fresh bread every day. Anita happened to mention to me that she makes her own sourdough and ciabatta bread, and I love ciabatta bread and sourdough. And um, I mentioned it in passing that I like it. And the next day came down about three loaves of bread this big. And the following day, just in case I hadn't had finished all of that, I had another two loaves come down and I was like, oh. With the nearest big town, Atherton, four hours drive away, fresh veggies were not easy to get. So Jens and Anita spent a lot of time in the vegetable garden. Well, that's nice. Well, everything that we grew, the beautiful beans and peas and courgettes and, and pumpkins that are coming on. So it, it, because we're restricted in the amount of vegetables and especially herbs, it was very useful to be able to grow our own. Pretty good, eh? Anita Ganza is a bit of a foodie 
and enjoyed meals like the Stefan's spicy Vietnamese beef soup with fresh herbs from the garden. Campbell, who ventured way out of his comfort zone, discovered a love of chilies. As far as protein goes here, it's beef, beef or beef from the station's own herd. Campbell Keogh says in the old days you couldn't get a job as a cook if you couldn't do basic butchering. But until this year, he'd never had a cook who could do it. That usually gets left to our staff to do. You might get a piece of steak where it starts this thick one end and might be that on the other or... Previous cooks served the station's beef shortly after slaughter, which isn't ideal if you want to serve tender beef. The Steffens hung and stretched it for five weeks. Yes, and Edith said that. She'd never had such a well flavoured steak in Abingdon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think possibly that can only come from the hanging and the stretching, oh, those yeah. two things, because yeah. the animal's always the same. The Steffens wasted nothing. This is beautiful meat. It seems a shame to mince it. Bones are a gift used to make stocks which are the base for soups and sauces. And so we can chop them up and eat roast marrow bone. Roast marrow is very good. Yeah. So your gravy is not out of the packet? No. No, no, <laughs> absolutely not. No I, green I, I box, sorry. I could not do it when there's so much goodness. Smoko is a ritual on stations. German-born Jens didn't know what it was. Once they'd worked out it was morning and afternoon tea, their chefing skills came to the fore. Their Smoko spreads became legendary. A big hit was a lemon cake with an outback touch, rum drizzle. Jens's elegant fruit platters increased fruit consumption, before, whole fruit was laid out, but little was eaten. Now, it all goes. Anita Ganza was surprised by the chef's attention to detail. I'd be mesmerised watching Jens when he'd plate up the salad, the, like the meat platter for lunch, and every slice had to be that far apart from each other or lay it over. Um, and if it wasn't, he'd adjust it and, you know, painstakingly you know, putting it all together and then piping, like just watching this, this creamy mashed potato come out of a pipe in little dots or, yeah, just we usually have lumpy mashed potato, you know. <laughs> Having fine dining chefs on station wasn't without its hiccups though. They were trying to accommodate everybody's needs and wants and dislikes and in the end it, it all got to um, a point where it's like, well, let's just go back to the start. We'll chuck out the dislike list and we'll concentrate on the like list because we're sort of like a family kitchen where it's like mum, dad and the kids and this is what you're getting for dinner. It took the chefs a while to adjust to their customers' palates. I think they were surprised how plain. Meat and three veg, Holbrook sauce, salt and pepper. From that to... Oh. Food names I don't even know. Corn beef, as you know, is, is really a staple. And I was so pleased with having loads of herbs in our garden. And so I made a white sauce with every witch herb in it. And they scraped it off. They didn't like it. And another time I made mashed potatoes and peas and put mint in it. And I was told the following morning that they wouldn't eat it. Well, it was a learning curve, I tell you. <laughs> but yes, I was disappointed, but then we've, we've learned and they have learned as well too. So it, we've come together. Big hits, chocolate mousse, pies and sausage rolls with homemade pastry, English muffins, enchiladas, quiche, and fluffy, lump-free mashed potato. Enjoy and that. curries with coconut milk, they like that. They probably hadn't had that before because they, uh, I brought 
ground spices with me, Indian spices, and I think they had only had keens. So it was a different flavor, you know? But they were good, they ate it all. They are exceptional. I'm having to go on a diet now. Their pastries are just too die for, and the temptation is just too much for me. This morning was a typical example. I mean, a little, whatever they call them, and pulled. Oh, the pulled pork sliders. Pulled pork sliders, and, um, <laughs> and just, you know, them sausage rolls that they make up, I and mean, it's all made by them, the whole. It's all memorable, really. Though the all-time station favourite, crumbed steak, had both Anita and Jens flummoxed. We don't speak about crumb steak. I never heard of it actually, crumb steak, yeah. Crumb schnitzel and, and this sort of thing, you know, chicken breasts, but never a steak. So what did the staff think? And I didn't think coming onto a station it would be this good, but it's pretty amazing the food that's coming out. Jens cooks a mad T-bone. They're the best T-bones. I love their quiche, their quiche and their eggs, their biscuits are by far my favourite. It's kind of like a restaurant, but you have to do your own washing it. i put on two kilos since I've been here, so... <laughs> that's it, that's a bonus. <laughs> During their stay, the couple found plenty of interest outside the kitchen. For Jens, it was the animals, especially the horses and chickens. How are you today? Yes, you're better. Jens visited a mob of station horses every day. Yeah. They didn't need the hay, he just That's wanted a pat beauty. and a chat. Go out of the way. The baby wants a bit of bread. Come on, darling. And I really enjoyed with the horses. They come running towards you and it's really enjoyable. And when you see a fool, and the mum, hey, it's really nice. His interest was a bonus for Campbell. It meant he could leave for a weekend, confident the horses were in able hands. Are you keep all the fools, or do you sell fools? No, we we'll well? keep more. Keep more. Mainly as uh, station, well, station horses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The couple spent their weekends exploring. They were fascinated by the station's wildlife, especially this bower bird's courting bower. Come on, Chooks! But for Jens, time with on, his chicks. girls was a highlight. Come on! Feeding time! OK, guys. Late afternoon, he amused all with his chicken pied piper routine. Look at this. Come on. Come on, girls. Lots of carrots and things and goodies. We got 15 out of 18 eggs. Enough for breakfast tomorrow morning? OK. The couple say they weren't bothered by the isolation or the heat. They didn't mind not having a TV, limited internet access, or getting a newspaper once a week. Yen says there are plenty of jobs out there and urges retired chefs with some cooking left in them to consider an extreme tree change. We are both 74, where most people are sitting and watching television. I think there's a lot of scope for uh, retired chefs to Be come out here yeah. and really enjoy this sort of life. Because there isn't the pressure that there yeah. is in the restaurant yeah. scenario. Anita Steffen says she and Jens loved every minute of their station posting. I could not think of a single solitary negative aspect about being here in Abingdon for the last six months at all. It's just been heaven. Because it's not just cooking, what you're doing. Uh, you're, you're, looking, you're looking after a group of people, like a family, you know. And it's, I think that's yeah. an enjoyable part of it. Not long after our visit, Anita and Jens headed home. But before they left, they gave the staff free reign to pick their last five favourite dinners. The winners? Crumb steak and chips, sausages and mash, steak and wedges, curried sausages and shepherd's pie. And good luck finding a cook. How hard's that going to be? Do you want the job? <laughs> <laughs>